We're back at Adams Polishes for the final part of this series with our good buddy Joe here. And if you remember in the last video, we did half of the vehicle with a ceramic coat. Yep. And Joe said, hey, go hit a trail, go have some fun, see if you can, uh, you know, splash some water on it or something. And uh, I figure, why half acid? Well, hey, yeah, you followed through, that's for sure. That's so for sure. I went up to uh, Caribou Creek, knew there was some mud up there, and uh, I wanted to see just how good this stuff would work. Yeah. And you can see from the videos here, we'll do a little walk around, that this is what I'm used to. This gunky, mucky, nasty mud stuck all over the vehicle, takes me forever to wash it off. And the side that has ceramic coating, you could say, looks a little bit better. A little bit, yeah, yeah. And I think that's again, as we talked about in the last video, you know, not only is it to help preserve perfection, if that's what you want to call it, but there's a functionality to it. And I think what you did or what we did here together shows that. Yeah, well, let's go to the other side and do a comparison. So now on this side, it looks pretty different. <laughs> I mean, you can see how the water kind of beat it up on here. Yeah. Most of it just fell right off and not just on the body, but the fenders, the suspension components, the mirrors, like everything that we hit with that ceramic coating looks significantly better right down the middle of the vehicle. It's absolutely incredible. Now, I shared some pictures with some friends of mine to say, look at this, look how cool it is. And one of the first comments I got was, yeah, but you could accomplish the same thing with wax. Okay. And sure, but what would be the advantage of one versus the other? Yeah, so definitely with wax, you can get a similar effect. Maybe not as pronounced, but the thing about wax is it just doesn't last as long, you know? So with a car like this, when, when the enjoyment you get out of this is going up to those mud pits or on the trail and everything, that's where you get the enjoyment, not going into the garage and waxing it like a garage clean, which is like what everybody <laughs> would call it, right? So minimizing your effort once you create the foundation is the goal, right? So re realistically, what you can do is get the ceramic on, go up, come back, spray it off, and you're pretty much done for the most part. Now, wax is not gonna last, you know, I think a lot of people say like, wax lasts three months. 
kind of, not when you're using it like this, right? And the other thing for wax for me is you can't put it onto the plastic or the glass, you know? So when you're waxing the car, you really have to avoid getting it onto the plastic because it will stain it. Well, the suspension component. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the fact that it was a spray yeah. made it so easy to just put everywhere. Yeah, and, and the thing too, I think is, once we get into the washing piece, which we're gonna do here in a second, is the clear or the the graphene ceramic coating is is harder than clear coat. So not only is it gonna bead water, so less dirt's on the car, but when you do actually wash it, you're not gonna introduce the damage like swirl marks and things like that that we already fixed uh, in the long run. So you know the functionality of ceramic coating or graphene ceramic coating is just the the benefit outweighs the negative, you know, and, and uh, to be honest with you, I couldn't even say that there is a negative to it because it's so <laughs> easy. And, you know, I, and I think we were just talking about it earlier. It's like, you know, this, this ceramic coating we use is rated to last two years. Now th that is somewhat of a BS rating because we don't know how much people use our car. It's like just our best guess essentially. Um, so with a car like this, it's getting beat up for good reason. Uh, it may last a year, but still that's a lot longer time than a wax lasting a week, you know? So what you can do is then when you get to that year mark, just reapply it. You saw how easy it was. And you're just, it's gonna be like this all the time. Versus potentially having to wax it every month maybe. Yeah. And that time is, is not short. Yeah. I mean, it's gonna take significantly more time yeah. to apply wax than it does the ceramic coating. With the introduction of that spray coating, our thing is wax is dead. Wax <laughs> is wax is a a uh, black and white TV with bunny ears tube TV that you know you have to turn the channel with the dial on the TV. You know if anybody if anybody watching remembers those. But cer graphene ceramic coating is like a 75 inch flat screen plasma TV. Like <laughs> it's just the new technology and using it to our advantage is key. All right. So let's see how easy it is to get it washed. We'll get the other side done. And uh, I, I gotta say, when I got home last week, <laughs> this thing was seen in the driveway. I had to walk out several times and look at it because I was just so impressed with how good this side of the Jeep looked. You go to the other side, it was still rough. It had the scratches in it but this side looked absolutely amazing. Yeah. So hopefully you got some good tips and uh, know-how on how to get there in the last video. This video, we're just gonna do some washing. Yeah, and this is, we're probably gonna talk a little bit more about like once you've got it on there and it's cut, you come back and wash, how do we go about that part of it? And some maintenance on the ceramic coating, which is always, the, the maintenance part is the easy part, you know? So uh, we'll get right into it. Good, let's get started. Now, we mentioned in the last video the, the right way to start a cleaning process, and that's with the wheels and tires. Yeah. Explain again why we start there. Yeah, so uh, the magic word, water spots, right? <laughs> like, so realistically, you know, we probably would have finished the whole, like if you're doing this at home, you would have done the whole car. And so again, taking steps forward and not backwards. So instead of blasting the whole car down, as much as it's tempting because you want to see the water behavior, uh, you want to minimize the chance for getting water spots. And so always starting with your wheels and tires first. Uh, so one wheel at a time, once you're done cleaning the wheels and tires, then we can go into washing it. But I do want to mention, and this is something that the founder Adam taught me very early on is the process of how you, like the routine and process of how you clean your car is equally as important as the products that you're using, right? So if I go ahead and start blasting the whole car down and get water spots, I have to come back and fix that. So focusing on wheels and tires first is always the first thing you do. And again, like here at Adams Polishes, cleaning your wheels and tires is attached to the washing process. There's never a moment when I clean my car or wash the body of the car without cleaning the wheels. Because if we went and cleaned all of this, and then you looked at these, it would be so obvious, you know, and it's, it doesn't take that long anyways. So we just do that. But I think what I'm curious to see is we sprayed the ceramic into the fenders and, and what I'm curious to see is how much of that dirt comes off during this. So now we did not put uh, 
coating on the wheels themselves. We did it, and I actually sort of regret that. <laughs> uh, it, we just kind of ran out of time, you know, and and uh, it is, as much as we ran out of time, it's such an easy process. Pretty much all you do is you take the spray ceramic like we did and the fenders and the suspension, you spray it in there, and then on any of the broad surfaces like the face of the wheel and the spokes, and if you can reach back, you take that applicator and you just even it out and then wipe it off the best you can. But when you do that, it, it will it would have the same effect on the wheels that it would on the paint and the fenders and everything. So I'll make sure, Carrie, I don't want to send you out of here with a <laughs> non-coated car. So I'll make sure before you leave that that ends up happening, you know? Excellent, because I'm looking forward to making sure it's easy to clean moving forward because yeah. this, this is fantastic so far. Yeah. So here we go, start blasting off the fender wells and we'll see what happens. So just with like a simple spray, you can see the water is beating like crazy. So the water is hydrophobic, meaning it beads, the water beads happen because the ceramic's rejecting the water. And what the water does is it grabs onto the dirt, it pulls it all off. And having a pressure washer, by far a pressure washer, is probably the number one tool that everybody needs in their detailing thing. And, and granted, they can be expensive, but it's like once you get it, the benefit is just outweighs the cost. Well, you know, so. we did that um, a year or so ago. We were looking at every time we went to the car wash, it was 15, 17 bucks, because we'd have to like do it twice or whatever, versus spending, I don't know, 120 bucks on a pressure washer. Yeah. It paid for itself in just a couple months. Yeah, exactly. You know, when we're out every week. Yep. So that's, this is just like the first sign of how easy this is gonna be. It's a matter of... already. The dressing we put on here, which was the graphene VRT, granted it was watered down, but that's even beating water a little bit, which again makes this a lot easier to clean. You know? Okay, so now we get into the cleaning with the- And we're gonna start with? Wheel and, and tire, tire cleaner, cleaner. One of these awesome, crazy names that they come up with. Yeah, again, try to be as creative as possible. <laughs> now, I would say that, um, like you can kind of see like right here, all the, dirt that came off of just this portion right so i would recommend like when you're doing this when you're doing the cleaning process like if you're gonna wash the car at home first stop at the paint spray on the way home <laughs> and just blast it off and and they have both like most of them have a high pressure rinse and then they also have a uh spot free rinse which isn't as high pressure but i will take the high pressure rinse blast the car off because i want I'd rather have the pay and spray deal with that and, and me not deal with it in my driveway or my neighbors have to deal with it. So just get the excess dirt and grime off, finish it with a spot free rinse so you're not gonna get water spots, drive it home, and then once you get it home, then do the washing process. It's just kind of a recommendation for me to, to try to make that, you know, that process a little bit, I, I don't know, I think they, th those places can just handle that amount of dirt yeah. You know, versus your driveway. Uh, it was just amazing how well that dirt just dropped right off of those fender liners. Yeah. And I'll say this too, like, you know, I think wheel cleaner, I'd probably say wheel cleaner is 
one of the, the harshest products that you could, you know, use on, on a car, on your wheels, just because the cleaning power needs to be, you know, so much. There isn't a chemistry that we sell, that any of us have access to in public that will deteriorate a ceramic coating. The way to, to, to make the ceramic coating start going away is to actually like abrade it off. So that's like polishing with the machine, whatever. So um, I'm fine with spraying that wheel and tire cleaner into the fender like that. Now, if you remembered from the last video when we cleaned the wheels and tires, the gunk that came off of these tires yeah during the first cleaning. I mean, that soap was just brown. Yep. This looks, I mean, it's dirty because there's mud on there, but it looks significantly better already just uh, because they, they cleaned easier. Yeah. I think that's a piece of car care that, you know, is something to consider is like the more frequent you do it, the easier you know, each time it's gonna be, and more efficient. So you end up spending less time. Can't forget the Optimus logo, you know? Yeah. <laughs> So there you go, one wheel. Look and that, that just doesn't take as much time because you know there are, we already did a lot of cleaning last time we were here. So we'll move on to the rest of them and uh, we'll move into the washing part. Excellent. I'm gonna start over here and then I'll kind of make my way. Making your way downtown? Yeah. Walking fast. I remember we did spray inside of here yeah. with the ceramic coating and you see the shock is cleaner the the springs are cleaner the caps are i mean everything is so much cleaner on this side already that now just spraying it with some water really is going to clean it up nicely look at that it comes right off just a couple swipes like that, I, love that. I mean just <laughs> absolutely incredible you know what carry i approve <laughs> I approve Joe that. That makes me so happy. <laughs> That's amazing. Even like your, even your frame. Yeah. Spray it on there. Oh yeah, the frame component looks fantastic. In there. That's cool. So one thing I'm noticing is there are spots that have some caked on mud that just didn't wash off with the spray. Yeah. And so again, just the ease of cleaning with the ceramic side. Yeah, you can kind huge of see difference. Like over here, even the frame. Uh, oh yeah. And a lot of up in here, you know. Definitely, uh, definitely a difference when it comes to cleaning. Even the graphene <laughs> VRT, it's like. This is a huge difference right here, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, he hit it with the sprayer <laughs> on the other side and that dirt just fell right off. This stuff is, is just 
sticking to it like glue. And you know, with a pressure washer, like the temptation is to go like this. Just let it do the cleaning? Yeah, no, like to get closer. <laughs> yeah. But you can actually like damage, especially paint, but even tires. I've even like, I've been doing it. This is in my amateur hour, but got really close and you can just see like a perfect line of the pressure washer. You just don't want to do that. You know? so, this one's going to take a little more scrubbing, which was expected, you know? Okay. I'd like to say I'm sorry for getting it as dirty as I did, but I'm not. <laughs> Carrie, <laughs> we, we sent you, you off with a goal and you achieved that goal, <laughs> which was get as dirty as possible. <laughs> And Kerry was trying, he was like, hey, do you want me to go to like a mild place? I'm like, Kerry, you can get as dirty as you want, man. I, I don't care, man. This is part of the, there's no holding back when your car is clean or like after you get your car clean and a good foundation of ceramics, just, you know, send it, you know? I did my best. You did a great job. <laughs> you sent me, you sent, you sent me the drone footage and I was like, oh, you know what? I was upset about one thing, and that's that uh, you didn't invite me. That you weren't there. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> we had some fun, for sure. Compared to the other side, the suds were maybe not quite white, but they were definitely cleaner looking suds compared to this side, yeah. where that mud just got kind of cooked into the rubber. Yep. Well, and if you're doing off-roading right, you have soft rubber, you know? Oh yeah. So it just the, the pores of the rubber take in much more of that dirt. Gotta keep going. Still, in all your raised lettering, there's still a lot of... I got some muck in there. Oh yeah. I mean, it's kind of one of those things that it just isn't going to come off on certain areas. I mean, I, I'd have to maybe do a few rounds on it, you know, but I think that's part of having that tire dressing on there. It's just going to make it a lot easier. And I mean, to be honest with you, like what I would recommend for you, Carrie, is we have a product called tire armor it's almost like this layer it's not not this is not technical by any means but <clears throat> do you remember when you were a kid and you'd like put glue on your hand you'd spread it out and then you'd peel it off <laughs> it'd be like putting like a layer of elmer's glue onto your tires huh. which is only going to make this part easier and then you can put dressing on top of it um, but that would i would recommend probably doing that um, it is a little bit shiny though, which you don't like. So no, we don't um, like shiny, shiny bad. <laughs> yeah. So. So yeah, I mean like where it gets heavy. Yeah, it's still sticking on there pretty good. And here's the thing. I, I don't want people to think like 
Well, you could still get that off. You can, but it's gonna take twice as long. Like the whole process is gonna take twice as long, maybe even longer than that. And so the efficiency of getting your car clean when you're done being on the trail is really like a big advantage to what we did on the other side, you know? Uh, I certainly didn't do any favors by getting it all muddy on Saturday and today being Tuesday, <laughs> you know, it, that mud really having a chance to dry on there is just acting like concrete on this the untreated tire here. Yeah. Well, listen, Carrie, I didn't do myself any favors by not doing this side. <laughs> it's not your fault. No, but it's good to, to highlight the difference. Yeah. What I'm looking forward to is later on this week, I'm getting ready to head to Overland of America in Jay, Oklahoma. So I've got 12 hours of driving to do. There's gonna be some trail runs there and they have a booth to spray down your vehicle. It's just a rinse booth. You're not supposed to do any washing there. So I'm hoping that uh, I get there. She looks better than she ever has. And then when I get it dirty, I go into the rinse booth, hose it off, and it looks fantastic super, super easily. So for me, that's gonna be a big key to see just how well this works after it's all done. And I just, the only tool I have is the ability to rinse it off. All right, we've uh, got the wheels and tires done. Yep. They look a lot better. They, they look great. I mean, when this thing was in the driveway last week, those tires looked better than brand new. Yeah. It was amazing. <laughs> Without having that super glossy shine on them that I don't like, yeah. they just looked like brand new tires. So now, now, so yeah, we're gonna get into the washing now. We'll just start on this side, but just before I start, you know, I have my wash pads, two of them, with the soap on the wash pads. I put a little bit in the bucket I have my second bucket with the clean water with my foam cannon sitting on top. And I have my cart over here, so I have the blower ready. I also have detail spray, and this is gonna be this one of the secrets today, waterless wash uh, as drying aids. But the soap I used actually is called graphene shampoo. So this is different than what we used before. Yes, and like the last video, we used strip wash out of the foam can and then we used regular car shampoo in the bucket. Because your car is pretty dirty, I am just supplementing those two soaps for graphene shampoo. Now the reason why, uh, I think a lot of people would think, oh, graphene shampoo, it has graphene protection in it. It has no protection to it. So what it does have though is extra cleaning power. So, you know, I know you were going through those mud pits, I guess, is that what you would call it? Like yeah. those mud pits? and the thing about that is there's a lot of other people going through those. And so their engines are getting in it, their exhaust is getting in it. So there's gonna be oil residue inside of that a little bit, right? The ceramic coating is not oil phobic. There's like a, there's a term for it, but it doesn't reject oil. So what I imagine is you might have some oil residue that's on the car. This will cut through that. So this is going to kind of cut through all the oil. So then the hydrophobic properties will be there. And I imagine like, no matter what, when we spray this, it's going to be quite hydrophobic, but you know, again, like the process we're doing now is the same that we did on the last video. We're just trading out the tools, right? Like, and that's how I think of our line. It's kind of like tools in your tool chest. Like last video, we used a flathead screwdriver. This week we're using a Phillips head screwdriver. It's just, it's kind of like a different, uh, and I'm using it for a specific advantage to deep clean it, you know? So, so here we go. I'll start spraying back over here. Or I'll start back here and then we'll just move our way around the car, so. So you can really see the effect of the water beads. Look at it just bead right off of that. And it's just grabbing on the dirt and taking it with it, you know? So even your proto packs and the uh, rear uh, window here. So just everything is the, the whole thing of the hydrophobic just pulls the water and the dirt off.
I love that. <laughs> Just amazing. And if you remember on the last video, like when we sprayed this the first time, it was completely flat. And so just that effect alone, like we were saying, like this is almost more dry than it was before. So like when we get to the drying portion, it's gonna be a lot easier, you know? This is no soap, no scrubbing, just pressure washer. You can really see the effect of the water beating here on the bumper. You'll see it on the hood too, but uh, you know, just spraying it with water. Because again, we did we did half of the bumper as well. So we've got the ceramic on this side, none on that side, and that water is just sitting there. It's amazing how the dirt just does not want to come off of the fender. Doesn't want to come off. I gotta spend more time. <laughs> I think that's part of it too, is like there's kind of this layer of dirt on here and like granted we can wash it, but you're just gonna be moving that dirt around for sure gonna cause soil marks on this side, you know? And we had corrected it on that side, but the ceramic is gonna really prevent from continuing to add damage to this. So another huge advantage to the ceramic coating. <laughs> all right carrie i'm tired of doing all the work you get to foam it now <laughs> awesome Uh, that's kind of fun, I gotta admit. <laughs>
<laughs> it sticks so much better than the stuff I have at home. It's just crazy. And I think the cool thing too is like you can really see like even when you foam it, like the ceramic coating is still like rejecting it a little bit, you know, but it's just, it's good to have that on there. Cause again, we're neutralizing the, all of our soaps neutralize the water, you know? So right now with this soap on here, uh, no chance for water spots whatsoever. Right, and we talked about that last week. You could just let this dry yep. and then come back and hose it off and you'll see it reactivate, yep. which is super cool. Not something I would ever do with the cheap stuff that I get on Amazon. So, <laughs> all right, what do I do next? Foam the other side. We're gonna foam the other side, <laughs> awesome. The other thing about the foam, it's a conversation starter. <laughs> your neighbors, your neighbors will come out and be like, "What are you doing?" Oh, I'm saying up for Christmas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Time to wash. I'll grab one wash pad. You grab the other. Can't let you do all the work. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. <laughs> Feel the wash pad just glide on. Oh this. yeah. I love that. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> the thing about washing cars is that it's the thing you do 99% of the time. You know, <laughs> and I think kind of in our industry, it gets kind of overlooked a little bit because you know the, the hot topics are ceramic coatings and polishing but the washing part is so important like having a, the right wash routine really sets you up for success in the long run you know yeah i mean what what's kind of surprising me about this is how smooth it feels going over this now yeah I always feel like I'm scraping everything yep. when I'm when I'm washing. And less drag means less scratching, you know? So that's a big advantage to the soap we're using, but also the ceramic coating that's on there, you know? That was fun, pretty easy. Hey, I got you to do some work. <laughs> those, what mitts were we using? Cause those were really nice. Yeah, those are just our standard 10 inch wash pad. And I, I personally like those the best. I don't like wash mitts i don't there's something about putting my hand into the mitt but uh 10 inch wash pad and the thing about them they're the cheapest thing we offer even though they're like really soft and premium uh but you know with cleaning cars like this they get kind of ratty they get almost like dreadlocky and once it does that it's a lot easier to toss them and get a new one you know so Spending uh, spending thirty dollars on a wash mitt just for me doesn't make <laughs> sense because I'm rotating through. I always have two in my bucket and I have two in my cabinet at home. So when one gets really ratty, I toss it. I move the other one to almost ratty. And I grab a new one and put it in. Can you just throw those in the washing machine? You just throw them out. You just get throw a them new out. one. Yeah. So really nice, really smooth going over it. Didn't feel like I was scratching anything, which was nice. And. Uh, you could, because they're white, you could really see as they were starting to get dirty and that it was time to rinse them off and get some fresh soap on yeah, them. Yeah. So now just so rinse time it to off. Rinse. Now, this is one thing I will say before I start rinsing, again, this is part of the process is 
do I have my forced air unit to blow the water out of the nooks and crannies like we did last video? Do I have my drying aid to slow the process of water spots? And do I have my drying towel? So I have everything ready. So now I feel comfortable. The other thing to consider is if you have kids, you know, generally you want to dry in the shade. So you want to like pull it into your garage or into your shop. Is your kid's bike sitting right there where you're going to have to move it? Because as soon as this water hits it, the hard water, time is ticking. Because again, water spots is we're trying to avoid that all the time. So I know in the sun has creeped over a building. So there's a very obvious sun line. So I don't want to start rinsing in the sun. I want to start rinsing in the shade. So that's what I'm going to start doing. And then I'll get into drying it right after that. So we'll start back here. There you go, you can really see how flat the water is on this side because it doesn't have anything on it. So I mentioned on the other side how you were just getting this flat sheet of water sticking to the door and here the, the water is just beating right off. So that ceramic's not just helping with the cleaning, the protection and everything else, it's going to make drying it easier because there's less water on the vehicle. Okay, well, you can really see the effect of the ceramic. I think one thing I really like about it is it's, you know, it's almost like dry for the, not, not everything, but there's a lot less water on here than before. So when we get into the next step, which is now, which is drying, it makes it a lot easier. So last video, we used detail spray as the drying aid, helps slow the process of water spots, but when it comes to being out on the trail, like of course we wash this really good, but there could still be some remnants of dirt. So I actually will opt for something called waterless wash, which this product, like if your car is dusty or even just like a little bit more, you can fully clean your car with this just by spraying and wiping it. This has much more lubrication to it. So this is the one I'm gonna mist onto the surface like this to slow the process of the water spots. Because if you missed it in the, the last video, you are supposed to make a drinking game out of how often Joe says water spots. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I bet people are still hung over <laughs> today from watching the last video because that was kind of like the that was the key word the whole it's time. It's definitely a, there's a recurring theme going on for sure. Yeah. Okay. Now that I have a nice little layer of lubrication on there with waterless wash, I'm actually going to take this blower I used last time and we'll get this plugged in. But what I want to show you guys is that once your car is ceramic coated, it even opens the door for being able to dry the whole car without even touching it, you know, because the water just won't stay there. So I can take my blower and if you look on your awesome handle for YouTube here, I'll turn this on and what you'll see is I can get even more water off of the surface. So. So 
So not only can we get the water out of them because crannies is better, but this is dry now. Wow. You know, so it just, it makes it so much easier. And with this being dry, less water on the surface. So when I go and use my drying towel to finish it, it's just that much easier. So, so even if we're just running it through an automatic car wash, yeah. you get to that blower cycle, it's gonna come out better than ever. A hundred percent, yeah. Gosh, after doing the stuff on this rubber, it looks amazing. It does. It looks almost new. I love that. It is such a big difference. Now, I've been here 10 years. I still get excited about stuff like that, <laughs> you know? That's something that I have always despised. Is every time I wash it, I get drips from the lock and from the handles and from the hinges. And having a little blower like that to get that out of there, it's just gone. It's one less thing to have to come back and fix later. Now something I really noticed while he was using the air dryer there, or the blower, was that as he was getting into all these little spots, it was just moving the water out onto the rest of the paint. Versus the ceramic coated side, he hit it, that with air and it just blew the, the water off into the air. So he was just kind of moving the water on this side versus really just blasting that water into oblivion on the ceramic coated side. So gonna have to take a towel to this side for sure and almost nothing on the ceramic side. So now once I've blown the water out of the nooks and crannies and on the ceramic coated side, like the water off of the paint, uh, I still use the towel. So, um, you know, I was talking about this before, but like you can see like blowing the water out of the door handle, there's still some dirt left behind. And it's not anything that, you know, I'd have to spend extra time rinsing and rinsing and rinsing. It's okay that there's a little bit of dirt in there because I can use the lubrication of the waterless wash and I'll just spray this on here and take the towel and just wipe it down, you know? So, um, so still like to go over the surface with the towel, but come here, Carrie, feel this. You can feel this on the paint. Still gliding really nice. Yes. You know, so less friction means less scratching, which is the goal here, so. Not introducing those swirl marks. Yep. <laughs> Look how good. Optimus looks. And this drying step can be a little bit more quick, you know, it's not like. So if any of my manufacturer friends want my Jeep in their booth because it looks so good, just let me know. Because <laughs> <laughs> this is, I mean, it's a, literally, it's a transformation. What a difference. This really hits me in the clean car feels heart, you know? <laughs> now, of course, we've used a bunch of different products for different purposes, different in two different videos. We've used some different products. So I don't know what to say, man. <laughs> Optimus looks absolutely amazing. And now the ease of cleaning is gonna be so much better. I mean, you saw the difference from going in the mud and how much was left on one side versus the other. I mean, that contrast was, I mean, yeah, beyond pretty, night and day. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. I mean, I'm, 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 really thrilled that we were able to do this, you know? And I think uh, when you reached out to me, I was like, I don't know, I'm, 
He just, listen, you guys, he just wanted the pinstripes gone. That's all I wanted, really. I can't do that. <laughs> I, I have, you know, it was one thing to remove the pinstripes, but once he showed up, there was other things that I felt like if we only did the pinstripes, all the other stuff would be more obvious. So, you know, restoring the black trim and getting it coated to make cleaning for you easier the next time, it's just kind of necessary, you know? And I always say like, detailing is like, peeling back layers. So you do one thing and then the next thing gets exposed. So then you peel back that layer and then the next thing. So, uh, you know, I kind of had an idea when I first saw the Jeep when you came that first day. Um, but I'm just glad that we could get it to, as long as you're happy, I am I'm happy. beyond happy. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it looked this good when I picked it up from the showroom. I mean, it looks remarkable. Now, there's a couple things that I'm gonna need in order to keep it updated. Uh, we'll, we'll pick up a, a foam cannon, we'll pick up the correct wash and stuff like that so that I can maintain it properly at home. But other than that, it should be pretty good to go. I mean, what things do I do I really need at this point? I, I need a good soap, right? Yeah. I need the, the spray cannon, uh, the tire dressing, and... Um, and a drying aid pretty much and a nice towel. Oh, that, that's the drying aid. And probably, you know, if we, if we wanna go to the next level, two buckets for the two bucket wash just to make sure we're minimizing the amount of dirt that's on the car. But, you know, once you have that set up, you're really good to go for a long time. Yeah, I have a pressure washer, so I'm good yeah. there. I got some of the other stuff, but uh, I just wanna make sure I get the right things to keep it looking like this for as long as possible. And then once we go somewhere and get it all messed up again and it's all bad, I'll just bring it back. So, uh, Joe, <laughs> thanks so much. Yeah. I really appreciate it. I mean, I can't thank you guys enough to Adams Polishes for helping us with this project. It went way beyond what we ever expected. The results, I mean, they speak for themselves. To, to see this thing in person is just, you're, it blows your mind. It looks so good. It, I hate to say it, looks like a mall crawler. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there, it's not perfect. There's a few really deep scratches that, you know, we don't want to go too far into it to try and remove. But it is a trail vehicle at the end of the day, but we wanted it to look as good as possible. Well, it's your version of perfect. Right. And that's fine. Everyone has a different version of perfect, and I think that's okay. Some people's version of perfect is never cleaning their car. <laughs> we, we don't care. That's fine. It's a total personal preference. And so we're not here to try to convert people to try to go crazy. Um, but I think what we want to do is, is once you understand it, and you understand the process, which is what we're really dedicated. And you want to do this. Yeah, Then and, and you do it once. I was telling him the first time I ever did it, I spent eight hours that day. I, I had no plan of doing it. It was just, again, peeling back the layers. And now from there on out, I have to do it the right way every time. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the Jeep staying, looking as good as possible. And what a, a, an educational piece for me. I hope you guys liked it. And if you wanna see more type of content like this, where you know we, we show you what to do with your vehicle to keep it in shape, keep it maintained, be sure and like, subscribe, let me know in the comments. Oh, okay, so what Adams has grace, gracefully offered us, for all you guys out there watching, a discount code. It's gonna be Trail Traveler. And what are they gonna get for that? We're gonna do 20% off and it's gonna be good through wow. the end of the year. So the end of, so December 31st, it will expire, but from now to December 31st, 20% off with the code Trail Traveler. That's, that's incredible. Now, you said you had another surprise for us. I do, yeah. So the other thing we wanna do is offer a giveaway for, the, for this video. So anyone who watches this video has made it to this point, uh, you can enter to win a, it's called the On The Go Complete Kit on AdamsPolishes.com. It comes in at a $219 value uh, and it comes with a few different things. Uh, mainly it comes with the spray coating that we did on this car that brought so much value. Um, so we'll do that. It even comes with a, a carrier bag and everything and you tell them how they can win that. Yeah, what we'll do is we'll, we'll put some information in the description below on how to enter the contest. I don't have the details as we're filming it today, but we'll have it all in there by the time we release this. God, thank you so much, man. Yeah. I, I, I can't appreciate it. Yeah. I, I am so stoked. I think we need to go do some shopping. I'll pick up a few supplies to keep it in good shape and we're gonna be out of here. I can't wait for people to see how good Optimus looks. Sounds good.